being that we've been around for like 37 years, to uh, have some folks come up to you and say, well, I want you to meet my daughter or my son, or this is my granddaughter, this is my grandson. You know, to know that our fan base has spread it that far over the years and it's still there, makes me feel kind of good. You know, I think that's one thing that stands out in my mind. There was one instance that we did in uh, Westbury, mm. uh, and a couple was there, and they said, I want you to meet the son that was conceived. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, that's yeah. when I felt old. Yeah. That's when I, felt old. <laughs> I, think, I think a situation that made me feel a certain way uh, about maybe maybe three years ago in Detroit mm -hmm. at the DTE Energy Center, um, we, we we featured a song in a show called uh, "Payback as a Dog," and I guess the song is uh, the song is like probably maybe thirty years old, maybe. And I guess when people hear a song like that, they think about what they were doing at that time. Um, this, uh, this, this lady started crying to every inch of her life. And I looked at him once, I'm like, what did we do wrong, you know? <laughs> that kind of, that kind of like did something to me every day. It kind of touched me, you know, so. When we did South Africa for the first time, we were approached a, a few times to, to do it. And with the problems with apartheid, we always refused uh, to go. And then when things were finally uh, to the point where any and everyone could come to the concert, uh, we went. And I think the show that we did in Johannesburg, I think it was like 60,000 people. And uh, when we came on stage, uh, just to see everyone singing Bet You By Golly Wall and moving their hands at the same time, that just blew my mind. It just, it's still, when I think about it, I still get chills thinking about it. We get a uh, big response from your you are, uh, you are everything, uh, of course, Betcha by Golly Wow, mm -hmm. and most definitely you make me feel brand new. The biggest response is hurry up this way again. People just go crazy. <laughs> I feel like they're going to run up on the stage in Stampede. Yeah, it's beautiful. We actually, in the 30-something years that we've been together, we're actually featuring songs that we've never did live before. Yeah. So it's, it's, it's all brand new for us now. What will happen now uh, with our fan base, uh, the fans will come up to us and say, well, you know, Sudden, Sudden, Such is my favorite song. You know, how come you don't want to do that in the show? And once we hear that, we'll go back to the drawing board and say, come on, guys, let's put this in the show because they came up and asked for that. So we'll do that. You know, there's some things that is very enjoyable out there, like Mariah Carey, you know, Usher is doing some nice things, you know. It's only a few people, you know, t you know to me. Um, I relate to this type of music because the words, you know, it has a message. And like what I hear today is like when you, when you look at a video with a song today, sometimes the video don't have no, re no relativity to the song, the song and vice versa. Right. It's like, you know, but back in the day it was, it was, it was different, you know. There was a, a way to say I love you without being vulgar or without saying take your clothes off right from the door. You know, the, the words, I mean, you can just imagine through song what, what, that, what the meaning was. And, it, you know, it was like clean but right to the point. And uh, I think that's the difference of what the lyrical content of today versus back what was going on back then. See, back then we had to work for it. <laughs> <laughs> I think that the music today, <clears throat> you know, we always talked about sex. We always talked about, you know, having a good time. But I think they're a little more, you know, they really <clears throat> get into yeah. it, yeah. telling you exactly, right, whereas, right from the door. Yeah. you know, back in my time, um, <laughs> 60s, 70s, um, it was more intellectual and sexy. You know, the voice alone could move you. You didn't have to say what you're going to do. Because we love what we do, first of all, that's the most important thing. Uh, but when that love transcends from the audience back to the group, group to audience, that's that driving force. I'm enjoying it again. Um, the earlier stage, we were, oof. 17, 18, mm. starting, some of us. <laughs> <laughs> and now uh, we kind of like settled in our ways and now that we have the two new members, uh, just making everything a lot easier and we're just floating 
with the music, floating with the love that we get from the audience, and it's enjoyable once again. People keep telling me that I'm new, but um, mm -hmm. I look at it as a ministry of, of love. You know what I'm saying? That, that's, that's what keep, in my opinion, keep us going. You know, it's, it's, all, it's a calling. You know, it's not so much where we put a dollar on everything, although it is our living, but it's a ministry. It's like, you know, we're going around preaching the word of love. That's all. Mm -hmm.